Alright, welcome to another Thursday video, I guess. Today we're looking at, and uh, first of all, I want to start off by saying don't get the wrong impression that I, that I, have, I have this channel dedicated to all. Uh, we can obviously tell on the, <laughs> by the name of this channel if you're new, by any means, uh, that I don't really focus too much on vintage cameras and video cameras and film and all that. I'm not a photographer or filmographer or anything like that, so don't get the wrong impression and subscribe thinking that's what you're thinking that's what I do on this channel and it's not. I we mainly focus on vintage TV, radio, short rib radio and stuff like that, but I thought I'd take a look at some of the old cameras and stuff that I've collected. So all these the uh, one, two, three, four cameras you see here in the front, those are all thirty five millimeter. Uh, still photo cameras, and then this one is a movie camera, an 8mm Super 8 film camera that I don't have any film for, but we'll go over that uh, later. So this one is a Minolta X700. Let me get the camera in a better position here. Here we go. Minolta X700. Uh, it's only had a single lens on it. Only came with a single lens on it. I don't have any other lenses. You can remove it, of course, and put like different lenses and stuff on it. You know, you have to take it off and put the lens in a case so it doesn't get wrecked. And you can put like a longer lens. This one is. Let's see. It says on here somewhere. Thirty foot, thirty foot. So you can zoom it up into, you can focus it into an object about thirty feet away. I think that's what the thirty feet uh, thing means. This is the Minolta X seven hundred. Still works. I found a battery for it. It takes those little nickel sized batteries. Just in there, I. Put it got a battery at one of the local electronics stores, put it in, loaded it with some film. First two times it didn't come out. They sent me with uh back with blank white film. And it turns out I didn't put it in the see those little white slots. I what I did was loaded the film and wrapped it around but didn't around the spool. I guess it's what you call it spool is a technical word. I didn't put the film in the spool slots there. So the film wasn't pulling and taking a picture of anything, and I did that uh, first. I did when I the first time I actually figured out how to put the, load the film properly. Keep in mind I'm only 17. I've been into what's known as the radio TV, uh, AM shortwave radio DXing hobby or vintage radio TV hobby. Uh, both those hobbies since I was six or seven. I haven't been really in the vintage camera hobby, but it's it's kind of a side hobby. I, I like uh, collecting antiques and stuff and vintage stuff like this. But I, put, I picked up on how to use this fairly quickly. I, you know, you think a lot of people my age, uh, you know, you watch the clips on Ellen. Those little comical Ellen DeGeneres show clips where <laughs> I think there was one where, uh, what was it, it was a gal my age or something, about 17. And, uh, the challenge was, Ellen made up the challenge that she had to figure out how to use a rotary dial phone. And she had no idea how to use it. London Drug sells the Fujifilm branded stuff and local grocery store sold the Kodak branded film. And it's not cheap these days, really. I mean, 25 bucks or something for two rolls of 35mm film, if I remember correctly. And 10 bucks for one roll, I believe it was. But yeah, you put the roll of film in here, you gotta lift it up, that little metal prong, and you would slide your film in there and you push it down, and you pull the film out around the spool, and stick it in the slot there, and wind it, oop, gotta hold that, there, and wind it like that, and you're taking the picture, and of course you can change the shutter speed, on the top, I think there's, what is that called, aperture priority mode or something like that. Probably going to seem stupid because I probably sounded stupid because I said that wrong. And 
then there's just P is priority mode or something like that. A is aperture something, and then there's the shutter speed. I always set it to P priority. Is that what it is? I'm gonna sound stupid if I got that wrong. Then you can adjust. That's where you can adjust the exposure. You have to hit that button here to adjust the exposure. I think. Am I doing this right? I don't think so. Oh, wait. The exposure is a pain in the ass to adjust on this one. But you can see I got it set at 400, which seems to be the best. There's a course. I don't remember what that adjustment is for. Again, I'm going to seem stupid. This one didn't come with the flash. Yeah. Oh, overall, real nice camera. It works great. It takes great great uh, pictures. Of course, the, 30, the look of 35mm uh, photos taken in 30, on uh, film, they look pretty neat, I can tell you that. There's also, if I move the, the, wind, the winding thing out of the way, whatever you want to call it. On off switch, and the on off switch you can set it to on, so right now it's just on, and set it to off, and then there's on with beep, so if I, heard the beep the first time around, this also has the little timer thing, so if I wind the film, and I pop up this little tab here, and push down on the shutter button. So if you want to take a family photo with everyone without having to have someone missing from the photo because someone had to hold the camera, you could set the camera up on the tripod and wind your film back, set the timer by just popping up that tab, press down on the shutter button and sit down as fast as you could before the shutter went off. Of course it starts beeping real slow and as it gets faster that means you're running out of time. You gotta sit down sit down on the couch with your family members as fast as you can to get, to get the get a good photo. Of course you never knew what it was gonna come out like. You could look all blurry trying to run to the couch with everyone else. Take a picture with everyone else. You can't look back at the photo, it's film. You don't know what comes. That's the neat thing about uh, 35 millimeter film is you don't know what to expect until it gets developed. Usually it takes about a week or two to develop. That's what it took this. Well, it took this one. I think the second I did two rolls of film on this one. The first one was fairly quick. The second one took quite a while. Here's some of the photos. Of course, London Drugs. I took it to London Drugs. They've done. 35 millimeter film for as long as I can remember, as long as I was a little kid and my dad would take baby photos of me when I was real little on an old 35 millimeter film camera. And we'd always go to London Drugs and get photos that my brother and I developed. Same with Walmart. Walmart, I don't know if Walmart in the States does it, but Walmart here does it still too. Of course, they had the digital digital print digital photo print machines there. You can plug your iPhone in via USB and print the photos off with their thing there. But uh, here's a photo photo from at the lake. I don't know if I can get some good lighting on that. But it came out quite nice. That one came out rather blurry. That's is that one. That's of a that's of a sign right outside the cottage. <laughs> out at the lake. Uh, back here in the, back in the day here in Alberta before my time, we had uh, AGT before we had the Telus Communications Company. It used to be AGT, which is Alberta Government Telephone. You know, there's a kind of a lower exposure photo in some shrubbery or whatever, in a underneath a tree or something. Hard to see. I don't know if I got very good lighting, that one came out blurry, that was during the thunderstorm. Like I said, you don't know what they're going to come out like, or if any of them come out like, or how many. This is 24 frames. I think you can get rolls of film which have 36 frames as well. But uh, some neat photos. 
So of course with the positive prints they also give you the negatives. Let's see here. If you can see that properly, there's the AGT sign, and my thumb is. Get that frame. This is a brownie Hawkeye. I've got the box and everything. Real neat. This is real antique, actually. Brownie Hawkeye from what, 1936? Let's say that's quite. I don't know if that's me, but it's almost kind of, kind of. Uh, Kind of creepy to look at, no? Doesn't that look kind of eerie? Of course, it's a black and white camera. And for those of you millennials like me, uh, the photos come out, uh, of course, judging by the size of the camera. Uh, for those of you millennials like me, uh, the photo comes out Insta style, you know, the square photo, like. You see on all the Insta. I don't know why Insta came up with that. Why they didn't just come up with a straight portrait style photo or a straight landscape 16 by 9 size photo or 4 by 3, 4 by 6. That's the weird thing I never understood about Apple is they you can record video on your iPhone in 16 by 9, but you can't take photos in 16 by 9. But this one's kind of neat. I think I believe that's what winds the film. Could see it's in pretty pristine shape for 1936. I mean that. Judging by the, a lot of the other ones I've seen online, they're pretty. The plastic's pretty worn, and sometimes the carrying strap is ripped. They're pretty dirty looking. The silver is not as clean looking as you see here. And of course, the, the viewfinder is just this right here. You, you look, uh, it's kind of odd. You gotta look kind of like, gotta face it up at yourself. It doesn't really help wearing glasses with the glare. But yeah. And you open it with the little switch on the top here. And I don't know what kind of film this takes. Maybe someone else can let me know. There's a little late warning label or whatever. And the side has a... Um, I don't know what kind of vintage musty smell, I guess. I've always grown to, since I've been in the vintage electronics hobby since I was little, I've always grown to love that old vintage musty smell. I think that's how you wind the film, like I said earlier. And here is the... I don't know if that's where you're supposed to put a roll of film. It looks like it's a little bigger than a roll of... It's just one of those instant... No, it's not an instamatic. Yeah, I don't know what kind of film that takes, but if you look at the side, it shows you what the flash looks like. You know, with the big ass bulb. Almost like a 60 watt, 40 watt light bulb hanging off the side with the shade. But, uh, yeah. That's a cool little camera. I couldn't take any pictures because I, I don't even know if that kind of film exists. I don't know what kind of film that is, but kind of cool. I got the box and everything. I think I showed this one already, but the Kodak, oh here's an Instamatic, Kodak Hawkeye Instamatic, well it's 35mm, not really Instamatic, but they call it Instamatic, here's one for the teen girls, like I was saying, for the millennials, who love their Fujifilm Instamatic. Right, well, starting with the next camera. The uh, again, I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right. Asahi Ahashi Pentax Spotmatic F. There you go. There's a look at the camera. There, it's got the flash on it. It's not. Uh, it's an aftermarket flash. Let's take that off. It's a. Vivitar Auto, model 202, I guess. Doesn't work. I tried uh, putting, if I get this open here. Yeah, there's batteries in it. I don't know 
if I'm ever gonna get this open. There you go. And there's some batteries in there. But it doesn't do anything. None of the pins are corroded. Actually, well, I take that back. They kind of are. I guess that's why. Let's spray some contact cleaner on that. Get some light on that. See the corrosion. Obviously, the the uh, alkaline leaked out of the batteries at one point. And corroded the pin. Not these ones, obviously, but an older pair of batteries. Well, an older pair of batteries is in there and just leaked. That tends to happen with a lot of stuff like this. A lot of camera equipment, they just let people leave batteries in it and let it corrode. And unfortunately, it's a pain in the ass to clean, but okay, what can you do? So that's, there's that. It has all the extra equipment and everything in this bag here that we'll go through. And this came from, again, a... Like I said, this came from my step-grandfather after he passed away in January of 20... He passed away in 2014. Something like that. But, uh, I don't think there's any film left in this. It is empty. Of course, they all open the same way. You just pull up the... The film rewind. And it'll pop open. Pretty pristine shape, this camera. There's a date on it, almost looks like there's two date codes on it. There's September, it's, it's stamped September 14th, 1987. And I don't know, it looks like some other date code, I'm not sure if you can see that. February 14th, or September 14th, 1987. I don't know what got on the lens. That's why it's got to be on a protector. Some sort of dust got on the camera lens. But yeah, no, so you can, uh, clean with uh, different lenses. Let me see if I can pull that off. There we go. So this is the the 30 footer I believe. Actually I think it's even smaller than that, yeah, 30 footer. If I put it too close to the camera then there's no light. So it can't uh focus on it. So we got some more light. Uh more lenses. Got some more lenses here. This got some more lenses here. This is a Nikon. Obviously an aftermarket. I'm not sure what the this rubber stuff this rubber stuff is around here for. Around the lens cover. There's another extra lens in there. This is the case for the camera, obviously. And someone uh, uh, left, uh, that's interesting. Someone left in here a roadmap to Los Angeles. Let's see that. Hmm. There's another lens. Another original. A lot of carvings in it for some reason. There's another lens. Uh, there's a bunch of other lens covers. There's this. I think that's for cleaning the lens. It's called the blower brush. Oh, because when you swish it. It disperses air. It's got like a little, almost looks like a makeup brush or something. I'm guessing that's the brush off the lens or something. You can, uh, there's, I don't know what's in this. A Hashi Pentax. 
Oh, here's another little lens cover thing. I'm not sure if you use that. I guess you would use that for certain lighting elements or something like that. Certain light lighting environments and such. I guess almost as a shade to keep some of the light out or something maybe. Made in Japan. And here's another, some other lenses. Here's the big 60 footer. Yeah. So, I'll do it. I guess it would help to take the back cover off. Go and just these one. This one's a little bit, uh, a little bit less complicated than the Minolta X700. All you have to do is just screw it off. Is with the Minolta X700. There's buttons. You got certain buttons you got to hold down on. But there's a 60 footer. This one I guess you would use for if you're outside and you're trying to film it. At, Trying to take a photo of something at a distance. Lenses, I think these are lens filters or something, I'm not sure. In here. Get it. one of them out. I'm not sure what this is. Is this meant to extend the lens or something? Maybe someone else can let me know. I'm not a filmographer or photographer, so I don't, I don't know all the ter technical terms. And I know some of the te technical terms that are used, but I don't know all the what all the equi equipment's for. Like you see these. There's the bottom of the camera case. I think there's more paperwork and stuff in here. Yeah, there is. There's. More book work for the camera. There's two manuals. I don't know why. This is part of the, the manual. It fell out. Is this a purchasing thing? Battery contact. Pair contact. Adjust meter speeds. Something in clean. So this is a uh, fantastic. Somebody sent it in for repair, and they got a little thing in down there. You can see. They wrote down. They printed down. They just jotted down real quick what was done. What else is in here? There's a creative filter system. Cooking examples 158. There you go. There's lots of old vintage book work in here. Atashi Pantax polarizing filter. I guess this is just shows examples of like Hard to, to, to hold the book vertically like this when the camera's so close, but and you got all sorts of sorts of neat little examples in here. Of what you can do. I don't know if this is like a photographer's magazine or something. I don't see a date on it. That's neat. Not sure what else is in here. Oh, there's notebooks and such. There's a pair of. Oh, here's the. Um, if you wanted to put the camera at a distance, you put that on the shutter button, 
and you push down on this almost like it's a needle and that would push down the shutter button so if you could stand in front of it and take a picture of yourself or whatever <laughs> there's other notebooks and stuff in here here's the flash manual yeah there's the flash like I said model 202 so it was right it's a little book for the flash a little manual oh I see that's what that adapter was for going to the rest of it Nikon FE instruction manual looks like it's for another can yeah it's for another camera that didn't come in here come with this one unfortunately someone else in the family might have had it or might have taken it now that my step grandfather's passed passed away I don't know 1982 Hallmark date book kinda neat Kodak Master Photo Guide there you go give this to your teen son or teen daughter with their Kodak uh, Instamatic camera there you go different table readings and I think it's that same other page we looked at the table of feet meter conversion table that's why I got stuff like this in here yeah filters film speeds it's like a whole exposure for photographing television images of course, you have to change. You still, still do with. Uh, it's not as bad with digital cameras. I wouldn't think. It wasn't as bad as these cameras as it is with digital cameras. I wouldn't think to take a picture. Now with these digital cameras, and the frame rate, you get all the blank. You get all the blanking, especially with the CRT. Then a little 1982 calendar, Hallmark calendar, stuff like that. Kind of neat. Yeah, I'm guessing whoever, there's a bunch of different names on these notebooks. I don't know who the original owner of the camera was. All I know is I got it after my step grandfather passed away, and somebody went to Metropolitan Los Angeles, I guess, to do some, and did some photographing. Well, uh, I found a few other things. I found some lens tissue, and I don't know if that's what this is. Uh, cleaning material or something and then there's some more lenses in here more filters and stuff and there's uh... in the other side there was a pack of bicycle playing cards Right, so here's a look at the, some of the other book work that uh, she was on my desk because I pulled it out last night. The same manual as the other one we found in here. I don't know why there's a duplicate. It's almost as if someone bought two of the same camera. Or maybe one's French and one's not, I don't know. One's obviously in better shape than the other. Yeah, Tashi Pentax Spotmatic F. It's got the index, all the specs and everything. Here's the spec sheet. 35mm single lens reflex with built in TTL light meter. All sorts of. That just shows you the operation of the camera. Maybe I can figure out how to set the flash to this camera with that. And there's interchangeable lens operating manual. I didn't get that big honking lens in this case. 
we didn't come up. Maybe that's an aftermarket thing that it's a, that there's a manual. There you go. Now you can walk around. Walk around LA with it like that, holding your. I wonder if people think of you walking around LA like that nowadays. Of course, I don't know. I'm not from LA. Never been to LA in my life. Maybe that's one. Of the, maybe that's a bucket list thing. Maybe that's one of the things I like. One of the places I like to go to before I die. I don't know. Maybe not with the way things are going now. Definitely, I don't know if I want to be there in the summer with all the wildfires they're having. There's a little lens thing. Buck on the lenses. Those sorts of. That's a real neat thing to. It's real neat to have a full, a full kit like this for sure. I think that's somewhere in Japan, if I remember correctly. Someone could correct me, but that building or whatever is in Japan. I forget what it's called. But I've seen it in a lot of... I, I think it's a popular des tourist destination in Japan or something. Maybe someone could correct me on that. There's a lot of advertisement on binoculars. Pair of binoculars. So there's the manual. There's the other lenses book. It shows quite some pretty pictures actually when you look through this. There's a 24 millimeter lens. That definitely doesn't look like LA, I can tell you that. It looks more like <laughs> it looks more like here. Canada. Seems like there's a lot of well it doesn't surprise me. It's made in uh Ohashi or whatever is a J Japanese company I believe, so it doesn't surprise me they got all these pictures from Japan. Kawhi just went down the street and took all those photos for the book. So there's some neat examples of stuff in here you can There's those Japanese buildings again. But uh yeah. Pretty neat. I think that's the Eiffel Tower. Could be mistaken. Just from that angle, I kind of like that photo. I don't know if it's the angle or what, but it's kind of a neat looking photo. And there's some sort of spec sheet or something. Complete system of superb Tukumara lenses. Am I saying that right? Does that sound Jap Do I sound Japanese enough for you? Tukumar? Is that, is that how you pronounce that? I don't know. So here's real quick compared to the. Minolta X700. Here's the pictures that I took with the Mahashi Pentax camera. Here's got the receipt in here. And this one, they didn't give me the negative in a little plastic sheet or whatever you want to call it. They actually gave it to me straight up in a little jar like that. And here's some of the photos. This is again from the Mahashi Pentax. So it's a bit of a darker, pretty looking picture, a little bit of a darker exposure. Looks like Christmas time again. Yeah, it was around Christmas time. I didn't get a whole lot of photos yet. Yeah, so it's on here, the rest of the photos that came out didn't come out because of the exposure. So I didn't get very many photos out of this roll, but they're there. Here we go. It's outside the front door, it's sunrise. 
here's the finale here. This is my thrift shop find I was talking about. I found this at a local thrift shop. This is, of course, a movie camera. It's a Super 8 movie camera. I don't know if those of you, those of, don't know if many people in my generation know what a Super 8 film camera is. Maybe that's not true. I think I've seen a lot of younger people do videos on these. In fact, you can actually still shoot on these in the 21st century, 21st century and get them developed. Of course, I can't go to London Drugs or Walmart to get the Super 8 film developed. That's impossible nowadays. Unlike you can still get 35mm film developed. I don't think they have all the equipment in the dark rooms anymore to develop this kind of stuff. But I got this at a local thrift shop called Country Clotheslines uh, a couple summers ago. I was shopping there and I found they had a section to explain the electrical tape earlier. This is a bit of a story behind it. I was out shopping with my mom actually when I got this. We spent the day out to get out to, out together and I still remember at uh, once a year every summer a &W has free uh, it's a free root beer day so you can go in and get a free root beer and I still remember doing that but uh, on that same I remember it was on that day that's how I remembered it for some reason I know it's odd but I was out with my mom and we went shopping together at the thrift shop spent the day together at a place called Country Clothesline local that's local here there was I was torn between there was a VHS camera, the camcorder there with all the equipment, it was a full kit, and then this. And of course, why would I choose the VHS camcorder or something cool like th this uh, Super 8 film camera? Of course I had to choose this, and it was in great shape, so I chose it. And what happened, I guess because it was sitting on the counter, the display cabinet was right by a window. And it was a hot summer day, so the sun was beaming in through the window. From the direction that the yeah the direction that the display can that was sitting near the window was, the sun beams right through it, and of course that rubber stuff got heated up. But I didn't realize it. So when I bought it, we purchased it. I think it was about what twenty bucks or something. We purchased it. We got in the car. We were on our way to A and W to get our free root beer and lunch or whatever after shopping, and we noticed all this black all this black ink like looking stuff smearing on the seat. It was on the, it ended up on the steering wheel and all of her hands, and we're thinking, okay, what the hell? And we figured out that it was coming from the lens, the rubber stuff on the lens, because it sat in the heat in the sun and, and melted. Looked at the battery thing here. Open that up. You see how there was also corroded. Somebody left some old, older batteries in there. And a lot of crow. I tried to clean it with uh, some contact cleaner. All that crap you see in there isn't from me. It's not from my contact cleaner. It was in there, and I, it was like that when I got it. Unfortunately, but I could still plug a. I have a cord that I can plug into the battery charging port. Right there, it's almost like a headphone type jack thing. I can plug that in, and this one has got has audio. Not all these can film in audio, but this one can. I don't know if you can change the lens. I think this is just one lens for all. One lens. Only I don't know if you can take this off and change it for a wider, uh, longer lens or whatever, or a wider lens. But uh, yeah, it's a film door, of course. So if I get the camera close here, open that up, and that's whoop, that's where you put your film. You can see the motor spindle here, whatever you want to call it. You get those Super 8 film cartridges, which I looked on Amazon for them on eBay. They're not cheap on Amazon. And they're not cheap on eBay. I think it was $94, $94 and something for one cartridge made by Kodak on Amazon. They Kodak still makes them, but they're very scarce these days. You can see the... I don't know if they call it an idler wheel these days. rolls against the film. Of course that button you can push it down and hold it down for the film to roll. If you don't want to hold it down constantly you push it down and slide it up and it'll lock in place and then you can pull it back down and unlock it to stop the film. There's of course Oh, wrong way. Well, I can show that. That's where the film Rides across, that's where the light flashes through the film, the little film window thing, whatever you want to call it. 
But I don't know if they call that an idly wheel or what. That little wheel right there. And of course, it's got all the jacks on the back. It's got the audio gain high and low. It's got the mic mounting bracket on the top. It's got a, I don't know what BLC means or fade. It's got the filter thing you can press down on. I guess if you want to put a filter on the lens, it's already built in. It's got the zoom. It's got the wide and telephoto. So the zoom in and zoom out. I'm sorry, the zoom in and zoom out. I don't know if that tells you how much film you have left. That little meter there. And I don't know what those buttons are for down there. Yeah, it's the GAF model. I guess I didn't mention the GAF model SS505XL. I'll do a separate video on this once I get some film. And there's a place here locally that I found. Thank goodness, is I didn't know if I were to buy some film and film it where I could take it to get developed. I thought I'd be out of luck, but I looked. And thank God there's a place called um, uh, Jeet Video here in Edmonton. I think it's in the Old Strathcona, uh, Old Strathcona area for those of you who live in the Edmonton, live in the city. But uh, yeah, no, it's in the Old Strathcona area. I don't remember the address. So uh, I found their website. I'll link their website, but they they scan old 60. They scan 60 millimeter film or 8 millimeter film. Of course, there's a difference between the. Uh, I think 60 millimeter film has a sharper image. Maybe I'm wrong, but I know 60 millimeter film is a wider reel, whereas 8 millimeter is a smaller reel. Once they developed it, it was all taken out of the cartridge and put on a reel that you would put through a projector and launch it that way. So I, I looked at the reviews. Apparently, they're not too bad and they're not too, too, too costly. It depends on what it is. They can. It sounds like they can. I'm not sure how much they pay to uh, get one roll of 8mm film digitalized. What they do is, I saw in another YouTube video, is a guy sent his cartridge in uh, to the mail. He shipped it to to some guy somewhere who has a dark room where he works with all this stuff. And he shipped it back on a little USB stick you can plug into your computer or laptop or whatever and played the video back via media file. Oh, you can see open this here now that's not running I don't know if you can see the light flickering in the lens there but uh... no yeah real neat there's the zoom Auto zoom. This telephoto, you can see it moves on its own there. You can do it manually as well, but I'm just pressing the. I don't know if someone can tell me this is running a little slow. I don't know what the frame rate of this camera is. I think I read online that this is 17 frames a second or something like that. So that's this video here. I'm going to move the remote. I've got the impeachment. There's nothing really else on television right now, is there? It feels like we're in uh, 2020 all over again. This time last year we were watching the Trump impeachment. Now we're watching it again. It's like I rewind the tape in my VCR and I'm watching it back. In March we're going to have a whole another map huge ass lockdown thing again there will be another big ass pandemic and grocery stores will start running out of food and toilet paper again in March in April anyways that's the end of this video uh... just a quick look at some of I don't know how if this video was quick it's probably gonna end up being 45 minutes long like all my other videos I try to cut it down as much as I can because I know people don't really like long videos some do and some don't but uh... yeah we'll end this video here we'll see you in the next one on Saturday uh, yeah, 73's.